Foreman versus Hart Med. I want it. Good morning, Harvey. What can I do for you today? I'm serious. They're pushing for a settlement because they know our client can afford it. I know they are. You haven't even looked at the file. My name is on the door. You think I don't know our cases? So why are we settling? Because regardless of the merits of this case, it's not worth our time. Harvey, listen to me. Hart Med's in-house lawyer negotiated this because the bad PR cost them more than the settlement. We'd have to get the thing dismissed to make it worth it, and that's not gonna happen. The lawyer is Nick Rinaldi. Who the hell's Nick Rinaldi? You don't remember? I was 11 years old, a little boy, powerless. I watched him boil my parents' lives down to a few dollars. Yes. I'm not gonna let that piece of shit get a penny from us. I said yes. Thanks, Harvey. You wanna thank me, why don't you go beat the shit out of this guy? Rinaldi. You remember me? James and Nina Ross. It's good. Finally know my parents' names. What you maybe don't know is that I'm a lawyer. I work for Pierce Inspector, and we're not going to be settling this foreman suit. We had an agreement. Yeah, maybe. But instead, we're going to be filing this. There's no way you're getting this case dismissed. You know, I actually wanted to believe that whole sob story about being reformed, My but... client is a widow, not a drunk driver. Oh, so you don't actually bully the little guy anymore. You just try and capitalize on it. Do you even know the details of this case? You're just coming after us because I'm on the other side. I'm coming after you because you're a worthless ambulance chaser, and I'm not going to let you take my client's money. This is the second time you've come after me from out of the blue. I apologize to you once. I will not apologize to you again. You don't have to. And we're not going to court because I'm going to prove you're full of shit. 2002, you were sued for the malfunctioning of an earlier model of the heart stent, is that correct? Yes, and we admitted wrongdoing. The stent that was installed in your patient was a new model developed through three years of extensive trials. Making it outside the scope and frankly not a good argument for establishing pattern. They saw a problem and they fixed it. How horrible. We should sue them. We're not in court. Opening statements are made before a judge. Or have you never been in court before? I just wanted to give you a taste, seeing as we're never actually going to get there. A dismissal is never going to happen, son. Sorry for your loss, son. What? I'm saying don't hope for a dismissal. Please direct your questions to our client. That wasn't a question, it was a comment. Here's a question for you, Mr. Diamond. Was this really worth to you? You may think you have a defense. Your lawyer certainly thinks you do. But I just want to be clear about the facts. What is this really worth to you? There's no question. This was a terrible accident. But let's be clear about the facts. His blood alcohol level is an issue here. If you pursue this in court, there's no guarantee you'll receive anything. Think about the boy. Think about what he needs. Something is better than nothing. Stop stalling, Mr. Ross. Um, He's I... not stalling, and we're under no obligation to disclose trials from an earlier model. It's beyond the scope. Our expert will place that study within the scope. Um, I, I... If there isn't a trial, your expert won't have any scope to place it in. And since you insist on asking questions we're under no obligation to answer, this deposition is over. What the hell happened in you there? You said you wanted to watch, not hijack my case. You said you were going to kick his ass, not drift into Never Never Land. I'm handling it. Handling it? I could have eaten that whole bag of peanuts in the pause you took to answer that question. You got thrown and I bailed you out. Harvey, this is my case. This is not your case. It's the client's case. And after what happened in there, they're in a worse position than when we started. Look, I know I got thrown, but I can still recover. Maybe, but they're going to call in a half an hour wanting to take the deal. And when they do, I'm going to buy you one day. And then I'm pulling the plug. Thank you, but um, sorry, I don't have time. It's food. It's not going to stop you. It's going to keep you going. Yeah, I don't need food. I need to find something I can take to this dismissal hearing tomorrow. Mike, it was a pretty decent settlement. Would it really be so bad to just take it? My dad was one of those guys who liked to celebrate everything. The um, half birthdays or first time I struck someone out at Little League. 
When the last time I saw them, they were celebrating the anniversary of their first date. They were so excited, all dressed up, and I was annoyed because I didn't want to spend the night at my grandmother's house. So before they left, my dad came upstairs to say goodbye, and I told him that celebrating a first date was stupid. <laughs> and he just looks at me like, Michael, you have no idea how important a first date can be. Theirs must have been a great one. No, no, no. It was a total disaster. He spilled wine all over her. He, he forgot his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> And then for some reason, this woman, you know, this woman who he knew was just perfect, agreed to a second date and a third and everything after that. I wish I could have met them. He tried to hug me goodbye. But I didn't hug him back. I didn't even go downstairs to say goodbye to my mom. And then they were gone. And then the next morning, Rinaldi shows up at our house and he offers my grandmother the equivalent of one year's rent. Rinaldi didn't kill my parents, but he did try to tell me what their lives were worth. And I'm sorry, but I know that my mom and dad were worth a lot more than that. Forget the food. Give me half the vial. 